you were awake at dawn. It breaks along soft, but the light is strong enough to guide you on the way home. The drive is long when you're alone, and the slightest yawn might flow into a doze that's imposing. Your eyes swollen and half open as you fight not to close them. The same eyes that have been holding your children tightly in your sight, sore but never closing, forever focused, like a mirror reflecting every second since the time I was born, those eyes the protection I wore when I laid in the cradle, when you taught me to stand, when I played under the table with the pots and the pens, those eyes that caught with the quickness of hands every scrape, injury and sickness now shaked and slammed shut under the weight of the night shift making your car drift to the right, just a bit. Despite this, you fight it and lift the highway with half-open eyelids deprived of your sleep and feeling it twice as much because you sacrificed about half to cook a meal with some rice for us in the kitchen kneeling like Christ for us, skin peeled and sliced off the onions so they could be mixed with the spice and such. Marinated precise and up to Aaron's room that's waiting for someone that's nice enough to wash all his whites and stuff while wiping the shelves, inhaling the mites and dust. And when flustered, it's like the one thing you ask is fill the cups up with ice or something like that. Now, clutching the wheel like a vice, you press on the gas just hard enough to pass the 18-wheeler you were behind. In fact, your car is far from aligned in its lane, so you straighten, making the sign of the cross. And sh say a short prayer to save your mind from the jaws of drowsiness, tunnel vision, and other causes of death. Just like how I saw you praying in the waiting room when I broke my shoulder, except that out of all the praise you knew, you chose for me the rosary and told her during the mysteries to please let me be okay. Actually, I don't know what was spoken. I fear I'm hard of hearing, but your prayers are more potent than an irizari healing, and I felt it when I saw you gripping those beads, almost tearing like it was an emergency or something, fearing that I'd need surgery or something, but one thing is clear, you were awake at dawn, and it's clear that you were awake at dawn, but you fall asleep and your eyes shut again. Longer this time, four seconds, five seconds, it's like holding your breath in a pond infested with gators. Six, your cell phone is on, but no one's calling to save you. Seven, yet you call me four times a day to make sure I ate or remember to pray for safety when you drive. Eight, or to say that you cried because that place inside the house by the couch where I'd sit and play with the cards is now vacant. Nine, like the max amount of time it takes for a boxer to rise up from a knockdown. And ten, you're awakened by the sound of a frenzied Simon Honda commercial on the radio. You still have a way to go, doing 50 in the 80 zone, slow but steady like you're pedaling, legs weathered and aching, so bolder than pride, and never forsaken, like the sparrows all over the sky. The road slightly narrow, but motivation is wide like an ocean overflowing with devotion to drive and stay awake for the next 15 minutes. The same drive that enabled you to make it through a ton of chores, a grand of patience, a hundred board examinations, the damning sort of separation, severing family cords and close relations. The same drive that took you through the 15-hour plane ride strapped to your seat as the plane inside travels at 500 miles an hour, accumulates in your eyes until you weep like a shower that turns into life-giving rain, soaking our futures and saving us from rusted dreams forever engraved on dusty streets that'll never be paved from crusty feet forever enslaved in chains of empty trades musty heat and empty plates to the states you drove us to the states you drove us and now it's 8 a.m. you pull into the garage park off center and close your eyes for the third time I wake up I find Dawn, the same one, climbing through the curtains and the cracks revealing my bed the shirt on my back and the roof on my head this day had no class, so the Bible I read, understanding the truth of your grind, the bread in the pantry, the fruits on the vine, that each line is a psalm I'm sending in rhyme, that I love you, Mom, and will till the ending of time.